Hello, my name is Lynn Fuller. I have a company called Lifestyle Solutions and I make a product called the Personal Cushion Lift. I'm making this short video to demonstrate the latest version that I have come up with which is designed to be used more for people that need to get up and down from the floor and not necessarily get in and out of the bathtub when it's filled with water. There's a few changes I've made to the design of the equipment that makes it easier to use for someone who mostly gets up and down from the floor. Um, quite a few people have difficulty uh, standing or with their balance and they occasionally fall or they kneel to the ground and they can't rise by themselves. So they need a cushion lift to help them stand up to a seated position so they can rise to their feet easily. <clears throat> That's what this is designed to do. Now, I've included in this kit, this is what's going to come in the mail when you uh, order uh, this kind of a, a cushion lift. <clears throat> I've included some things that are not really necessary for people who sit on the floor, who rise from the floor, but it's part of the, uh, the offer that I have on eBay, so I'm going to include them anyway. These are towels that are used um, as a protective... Uh, barrier for people that are using it in the bathtub. Obviously you don't want to have the surface dirty from uh, being exposed to people with no clothes on in the bath. So this acts as a barrier. I'm going to include this even though it's not really necessary for the application of just getting up from the floor. For that same reason <clears throat> I'm going to include this which is the handle that attaches to the side of the bathtub. It's not really necessary if you're not taking a bath, but nonetheless it's part of the package. So these two things will be included in the box even though they're not necessary for getting up and down from the floor. It's, it's kind of a package deal, so I'm including them as part of the price. What is going to be necessary for the situation of a person getting up and down from the floor is this. This is a normal cushion lift. This happens to be blue and red with the same basic design. The bottom has a, a large um, circular foam support which helps to stabilize it. The top has a partial foam support which helps the person using it to know where the back of the seating area is. So when you sit in this, you kind of put your bottom down inside this area and you sit in the center. So this, this uh, cushion helps the person to find the center of the cushion. Um, this is a normal uh, air pump which I include with all of my cushion lifts and it doesn't work any differently than any others. The, the actual design change is in the hose, which I'll show you in just a minute. This device here on the end is the remote control electronic device. So you'll see that as I plug it in to the outlet here, I have remote control over the pump by pushing this device. I can turn the pump on and off. And you can see the light comes on when the pump is activated. When I push the off switch, the light goes off and the pump goes off. So this is designed so the pump can be placed anywhere in the room or even in a room next door close by. Because you have a, a clear vinyl hose, which comes with the kit, obviously, because that's how the, uh, the air is inflated into the cushion. And it's wound up in such a way that really there's, there's only one way to, to hook up the, the pump. One end has uh, an attachment on it. In this case, I have black and white, but it could come in a variety of colors. This just happens to be the two that I had available. This is the part that plugs in to the cushion. So you can see that off the back of the cushion, there's a hose, which has an open fitting. This part slides together like this, and it doesn't, doesn't have to go very tight. Just slide it in place, and it's a pretty firm grip on its own. And then this hose is long enough so it can be put anywhere that's convenient. So in the case of somebody that, uh, let's say, for example, had a problem uh, not getting up from the ground after uh, working in the family room or in the kitchen or something like that in an apartment, this hose would allow the pump to be placed in almost any position in the house or the apartment and then the cushion can be moved to where it's needed. Now in, in case this hose is not long enough 
This is a hose which is 20 feet long because that's what I figured is long enough for most situations, but this hose could actually be 100 feet long. Um, it, it's very inexpensive to buy this hose. I think I spent $8 to buy 20 feet of it at a hardware store. So, and it comes in a variety of lengths. So, uh, on the chance that this hose is not long enough for you, you can buy an extension at the store and a 3 8 inch attachment so that the hose can hook together or you can just buy one long continuous hose so that it can be placed anywhere you need the air compressor, the air pump to be located. So the end of the hose that has no attachment fits right on the end of the air pump. So it just slides in place and it's a very easy fit. It's it just friction fit because this is a very low pressure um, tool. So that's placed back here. Um, I can point out at this point, this is the variation that I've built into this design. This pump, this uh, attachment here on the front is where the compressed air comes out. And this attachment here in the back is where the suction air goes in. So when this device is working, the air is going in the back and coming out the front. So at the time when you want the cushion to inflate, such as when you're on the floor and you have difficulty standing up on your own, if you put the uh, hose attached to the front piece here, and then from a remote location press the button, the pump comes on and the cushion begins to inflate. Now I'm just going to let that cushion come up on its own because it's going to take um, a few minutes and I want everyone to see exactly how it works. Now, for the sake of um, uh, demonstration, I'm not going to sit on this cushion because it will take too long and you won't be able to see how the cushion inflates. But needless to say, if I were at the point now where I needed to use this cushion, I would be sitting on it. This cushion takes about three to four minutes to rise to full height. I have designed it so that it works kind of slowly so that you don't accidentally lose your balance as the cushion is, is filling and lifting the person sitting on it. While the cushion is moving upward, it's better to be able to balance yourself by holding on to a couch or a piece of furniture or even just holding on to the floor. Because, you know, even though most people are used to sitting in a chair without using their hands, when you're rising from the floor, it's best to kind of reach out and touch the side to make sure you don't lose your balance. When this gets to the point of being even partially inflated, it becomes stable enough to where it'll help you to hold your balance pretty well. But what you don't want to do is lose your balance and fall out, because that's obviously counterproductive to standing up. So, as you can see, this cushion fills with air pretty quickly. And what I've done, I've designed this with, with two little attachments here. The first attachment that's closer to the cushion is actually an air release valve that opens manually. So I have to turn this to let the air out. And I do this when I want to deflate the cushion and sit down. The second valve back here is an automatically opening valve which opens when the cushion is overpressurized. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate here what happens when I let the cushion continue to be inflated. You can see now that it's full. You know, th this is full enough now to where I can easily sit on it with no problem. However, I'm going to let the pump continue to run. And what's going to happen is this little valve right here is going to open automatically to release the extra air. When this valve opens, you're going to hear a hissing sound. It's going to release some air from the pump, from the cushion, so that it deflates and doesn't get overpressurized. And then this valve will automatically close and let the pump continue to work again so that it doesn't damage anything by being overpressurized. Obviously, if you were a person who was standing up from the floor, at this point, you would want to stop the pump with the control device. 
If you stop the pump, it's going to stay just exactly like it is, fully pressurized, fully inflated. It'll make it easy for you to stand up from the floor. But just in case you forget to turn off the pump, let's say the pump continues to run on its own, this little valve right here will open and release the extra pressure. This overpressurizes actually quite a bit. Uh, it's all totally safe. It's very well constructed and very strong so that it shouldn't tear, it shouldn't burst, it shouldn't rip, it shouldn't do anything. Okay, so now we have the cushion inflating and I'm waiting for the pressure bypass valve to open which prevents the cushion from being overinflated and becoming damaged. So normally this would be about the height where you would stop the pump and get off of the chair. There we go. This is what the sound is like when the uh, bypass valve opens. And I'm going to stop the pump so you can hear it. That hissing sound. What happens is that releases pressure from the pump. It also releases pressure from the cushion. It keeps the cushion from being overinflated and damaged. Now you can either leave the in, 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 um, air pump on or you can turn it off. When I turn off the air pump, this valve closes. But in the event that the pump was continuing to run, this valve will still close when the pressure gets low enough. And then it, when it closes, the pump is then able to put pressure back into the, the cushion again and reinflate it to full volume and if it goes too high then this will open and the excess pressure will be bypassed. So the idea is this is a safety valve. This is not meant to be adjusted by the consumer. I adjust that when I build the machine so that it opens and closes at the right time. Even if this com the um, the pressure relief valve opens and some of the pressure from the cushion is released, the cushion will still stay inflated. It will never completely deflate unless, I'm going to turn off the pump now, unless you open the manual release air release valve here. At that point, the pressure will be relieved from the, the cushion cushion will get smaller, that's fully open. The idea is that this uh, air release valve is meant for someone who's in the bathtub who wants to take a bath. And with the valve open like this, the cushion gets smaller and eventually will lower the person down to the floor or to the bottom of the bathtub. The problem is, for people who don't need to take a bath, they don't need to go from a seating position down to the floor. For people who only need this chair to be lifted up from the floor, the problem then becomes, how do I get the inflated chair back down to a flat condition again? So it can be used the next time the person needs to be lifted from the floor. Otherwise, what happens is, even with the valve open all the way, this cushion goes down to about maybe six or eight inches above the floor and then kind of stays inflated like a marshmallow. And that's really too high off the floor for someone to use if they need to be lifted from the floor, from the, from the lower level on the floor. So I've designed this pump differently. Just in case this valve, you can open it and release the pressure. If it doesn't take the the cushion all the way back down to a flat condition again, what you do is this. Close this valve so that this pump is, or the uh, air line is completely closed. And then on the compressor, take the hose off of the pressure end, this pressure end, instead put it on the suction end, down here. And again, it doesn't have to go on very hard, just maybe a half inch, just enough to keep it in place. And so after you, you stood up, after the cushion has helped you to stand up from the floor, maybe I should stand up from the floor, 
In fact, you know what? I'm going to sit on this and I'll show you how it works. Just real quickly. So it's not going to be a full lift, but it will show you how it works. So this is only partially inflated, but it's high enough for me to sit on easily. Now, with the pressure side attached to the hose, I start the compressor. I can feel it, the pump lifting me up. Now, in case you feel uncomfortable, balance yourself on a chair or even balance yourself by touching the floor. Just, you don't want to fall off. So, whatever it takes to keep your balance, maybe hold your feet further apart or lean off to the side. But the actual cushion and the air pump do all of the lifting to get the person off the floor up to a seated position. So all you have to do is keep your balance. So I'll just sit here and wait for the cushion to come all the way up to where I feel comfortable. This is actually designed so that the, the cushion gets pretty hard. Um, in, instead of feeling like a, uh, I don't know, a swimming pool toy, for example, that's kind of squishy, this actually feels like a chair. It becomes so stiff and so firm that it has, it has hardly any movement to it at all. And I've designed the pump and the air valve in such a way that it kind of overinflates the cushion to make it really stable and firm. So when it's fully inflated, you feel comfortable standing up, you know, from a, from a seated position. Uh, for most people, 16 inches high is about the correct height for this uh, cushion to reach. Um, 16 inches is the height of a normal couch or a chair. Um, the toilet seat on most houses is about 16 to 17 inches. So I figure 16 inches is about right for a comfortable place to stand up. And you can tell now that this is very close to being fully inflated because it's so firm. So what I'd normally do is turn off the pump like this and then stand up. Now, the problem with this situation is for a person who does not need to be lowered down to the floor, this cushion is too high. So, for a person who, who needs to prepare this cushion again to be flat so it can lift them up from the floor, the thing to do is to take the, the air pressure valve off of the pressure side and put it back here on the suction side. When it goes on the suction side of the compressor, when I turn the pump on like this, you can hear the noise is different. What it's doing is sucking the air out of the cushion and putting it back down to a very flat position. So I'm going to turn it on now and watch what happens. You can see in a very short time it's already about half as high as it was before. Without this pump sucking the air out of the cushion, what happens is it gets to about this height right there and that's where it stays. And that's an awkward height to use if you need to be lifted up from the floor. So with the pump you continue, you continue sucking the air out of the cushion until it's back to a flat position again.
Now, I, I want you to pay attention and listen. When this pump gets all the way to where all of the air has been sucked out of the cushion, the noise changes slightly. And what that means is there's no more air left in the cushion to suck out, so the pump kind of struggles to work. So that's the point that you need to turn the pump off because that means all the air is out of the cushion. So listen carefully. that means is there's no air left in the cushion to be pulled out. So that's as flat as the cushion is going to be. So at this point, what you want to do is remember to take it off of the suction side of the compressor, move the air hose off of the suction side, and put it back on the air pressure side so that it's all ready for the next time you need help rising from the floor. So for example, if I, if I knelt down and I couldn't stand up on my own, you can move over to the cushion, sit on the cushion like you would be sitting on the floor, and now I'm flat on the floor like this, with the air hose on the pressure side, start the compressor, and it then lifts me back up again. So the secret is, when you're finished, being lifted from the floor, it's very important to remember to move the hose to the suction side, start the compressor, remove all the air from the cushion, and then move the hose back to the pressure side so it can be used the next time you need to use the cushion to be lifted from the floor. So, hopefully this explains how it functions. Um, it's not terribly complicated. There's only two or three steps you need to remember. Number one, the on and off switch with the push button. The hose has to be connected to both the pump and it has to be connected to the cushion. And again, this end with the two valves on it is the one that plugs into the cushion side. And it doesn't have to be very tight. It just has to be pushed on maybe a half inch. So then it comes off very easily too because it, this is a very low pressure cushion. Um, I don't think the, this pump even puts out more than four or five pounds of pressure. So the amount of pressure that's going through this line is so low that it never causes the hose to come apart unless it's pulled apart by hand, but the pressure will never force it apart, so it doesn't have to be pushed together very tightly. So connect it to the, the cushion, connect it to the pressure side of the air hose, plug the pump into the wall with the remote control device, and you're all set to be lifted from the floor when the time comes when you can't get up from the floor by yourself. Now, with everything I've just explained, with all that being said and done, this device can still be used in the bathtub if you'd like. So don't think this is now set up in such a way that it can't be used in the bathtub. This is exactly like a, a similar type device which can be used in the bathtub, but the parts that have changed are the suction side of the pump, and also I moved the pressure relief valve up here closer so that you can hear it more easily. So, this can still be used in the bathtub if you choose without any problem at all. Um, so, if you choose to use this in the bathtub, you're more than welcome to. In the case of a bathtub, you inflate it all the way, sit on the cushion, open the remote or the manually open valve to lower yourself into the tub, fill the bathtub full of water and take a bath, close the valve, 
Remote control is used to start the air pump, in which case the cushion lifts the person up out of the tub and they can step easily out of the tub without struggling to get out of the water by themselves. So, despite the fact that this is designed especially for use on a floor, it can still be used in a bathtub with absolutely no problems. So, hopefully, this explains some of the um, design changes. Uh, I, I think, uh, overall, it works um, to help a person rising from the floor only so that the, the cushion can be replaced, can be returned back to a flat condition again and be ready to use in the future for lifting a person up off the floor. Um, hopefully, this works well for you. Um, of course, I don't know everyone's situation, but uh, this is designed for a variety of applications. It can be used indoors and outdoors, anywhere there's electrical supply. So in order to take this device um, to the backyard, all you need is an extension cord. And this device will go you know, 50 to 100 feet from your house if you need it to get um, up and down from a, a picnic or from a barbecue in the backyard or playing games on the lawn or just relaxing in the sun. Uh, we have a neighbor across the street. Sometimes he kneels down in his yard to fix the sprinklers and he can't stand up again. In that situation, this would be perfect to use outdoors in the yard. It's designed of a very strong material, so it's, it's very resistant to being punctured. So, it can be used in the bathtub or not. It can be used indoors and outdoors. And it can be moved to whatever situation, whatever place in the house or in the yard where you need to use it. By the way, one more thing I'd like to add. Just in case you have bought one of these cushion lifts and you've used it for a short period of time or even a long period of time, and something about it is damaged, if something's broken, uh, if you lose something or if it gets torn by accident, please contact me. Contact the company and I can make arrangements to either have uh, this uh, broken device sent back to me and I can probably repair it or if it's just a part inside that needs to be replaced, I can send the part to you and you know, allow the device to continue to work. So don't think that just because something's happened to this, I mean, let's say, oh, I don't know, you have a dog and the dog decides to use this as a chew toy, you know, something like that. It doesn't mean it's destroyed. It can probably be repaired and put back into service for much less than the cost of buying a new one. So, if for some reason that's damaged and you'd like it to be repaired, please contact me. My name is Lynn Fuller, L-I-N-N-F-U-L-L-E-R. My personal cell phone number is 509-366-3439. And the name of my company is Lifestyle Solutions. So please give me a call and I will do my best to uh, either sell you a cushion lift or repair the one you have if it's damaged for some reason. Also, if you have any questions or problems, please give me a call and I'll do my best to help. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck with your, your use of the personal cushion lift in your life to make it easier. Take care.